Welcome back to PokePaint, the series where I draw Fakemon for my fan-made Pokemon region called Trapor, based on the US and British Virgin Islands of the Southern Caribbean. It's ooh, been almost a month since my last episode, but that was kind of on purpose. Uh, a few of my recent videos were, not to say easier to make, but had a much shorter production schedule. And since I went on vacation last week, I wanted to get a few videos uh, kind of on the back burner that would go up while I was away so that you guys weren't left without any content. Now that I'm back, I wanted to hop right back into PokePaint. In the last PokePaint, I started making a few Pokemon that might appear on the islands of Trapor, specifically in this region's version of the wild area, the open sea area. But since I had so many designs, mainly because I did multiple Dwebble forms in that video, I had to split it up into two. So today, we're going to continue our journey across Trapor, where we'll discover the Pokemon that dwell on the islands of this region. Like the video where I did the ocean dwelling Pokemon, I'm going to go through a list of Pokemon that already exist, or that have already drawn, that will be found on these islands. We of course have the Dwebble forms. On the majority of these islands that are either mostly sand or forested, we'll find the Dwebble shell form. Followed by Execute, Executor, Wimpod and Galisopod, Pylosand and Sandygast, and Salandit and Salazzle. In the jungles, Dupider and Araquanid would be found, followed by the Trumbeak line and the Dracovern and Probito line. Bellsprout, Weepin Bell, and Victory Bell. Cubone, and it's a lowland evolution, Marowak. Osirit, and Fantaguar. Tangela, and Tangrowth. Spinarak, and Ariados. The Toxaleaf line. Heracross, the Ludicolo line. Shroomish, and Breloom. That's a lot. <laughs> like I said in my Oceans video, this list will undoubtedly be added to. However, for now, that's where I'll stop. Well, that is, after I add these next two lines for the day. This first Pokemon is one that I've been thinking about for a really long time, and it took a couple of tries to get it right. Although the Virgin Islands are near South and Central America, and therefore share some culture with it, its primary influence is, of course, the other Caribbean islands. So I wanted to make more Pokemon based in those concepts. This first one I did is based off of the fact that in the 15th and 16th centuries, when sailors explored this area, they brought with them a lot of livestock to, of course, feed themselves. And when they couldn't afford to keep them on the ships for whatever reason, they would usually just drop them off on the many islands there. With no natural predators to kill them off, the hogs that they dropped off became an invasive species, and sailors in the coming decades would find it easy to hunt these pigs as food. So I took this idea and made a food-based Pokemon inspired by it. My first design was a bit plain, just a wooden pig with a soup bowl for its back, so I added some more cutlery imagery in the second version with a wooden spoon for the nose and the end of a wine bottle opener for its tail. I was set on giving it this timid or maybe alarmed nature due to the kind of dark side of its inspiration, so I drew this version in a less balanced and also more dynamic, just visually interesting pose. Its name is a portmanteau of Delicious and Oink. Deloink, the potbelly Pokemon. Deloink are known as a rare delicacy in many other regions. However, here in Trapor, where they are invasive, they thrive. They are popular with farmers here as Deloink produce a delicious soup that changes its taste and texture depending on what the Pokemon is fed. The soup originating from its bowl is a staple dish of this region. Deloink's evolution, Rampot, takes its original concept a lot more literally. Uh, it appears to be far more aggressive to get closer to how the real animals are. The hogs that are invasive to the Caribbean and the southern United States are still a problem to this day, and they're hyper-aggressive, putting both the environment and the people who live there at risk. This is why, at least in the United States, like Florida and the Carolinas, the hunting of these creatures is completely legal all year round and actually encouraged depending on where in these states you live. So I took more cutlery inspired designs for this Pokemon, its face taking the vague shape of a cutting board, and its midsection taking the form of a pot, taking the idea of a pot-bellied pig, quite literally. Rampot, the pot belly Pokemon. Unlike their quite docile pre-evolution, Rampot are very territorial, and can pose a danger to both people and Pokemon. 
This, however, is simply a front, as these Pokemon in the past were heavily taken advantage of for the delectable stew that it curates inside of its own pot. The trainers of these powerful Pokemon will learn that this Pokemon only shares its soup with those that it considers its closest friends. Making an Iguana Pokemon was one of the first ideas that I came up with for this video, but this Pokemon, specifically its first form, was the last one that I designed for this video. It took some time to settle on a typing for this Pokemon, but I eventually settled on the Poison type, as I learned in research for this video that Iguanas are actually venomous. Their venom is harmless to humans, but it's more effective against smaller animals. I also came to the conclusion that the Poison type is the right type, as looking back, in tallying up the types, I haven't done a single poison type yet. I didn't catch the beginning of the recording, unfortunately, but thankfully I caught it halfway through and started to actually record. At the beginning, I made a visual mood board of Pokemon that included Krogunk and Seismitoad. I'll leave you to guess which of these details were inspired by those Pokemon. Venwana, the Iguana Pokemon. These Pokemon have a selective venom that only affects Pokemon that are weak against it. Those Pokemon, if hit with a poison type move from Venwana, will suffer boosted damage. However, the reverse is true, as Pokemon that are strong against or resist this Pokemon's typing will not be hurt by Venwana's poison type moves at all. Okay, so the ability that I came up with might be a little complicated but I think that it's a pretty cool representation of the real animal's biology in a fictional monster. Making an evolution for this Pokemon was kind of a no-brainer, so much so that I made this design before I did its pre-evolution. The marine iguana is, of course, said inspiration. And I guess that also means that we're already adding to the list of sea-dwelling Pokemon for this region? The shape and pose was pretty set in stone from the beginning, but its color palette was one that I messed around with quite a bit and one of its possible palettes influenced its shiny. While its palette differs quite a bit from Venwana's color palette, a little more than I would usually allow, I think it exemplifies the drastic type change, so for now, at least, I'm gonna keep it. We'll just have to see if I stay happy with it. Aquaguana, the Iguana Pokemon. Aquaguana and Venwana were once thought to be two different Pokemon species, but after a trainer gave its Venwana a water stone to hold, it evolved. Aquaguana inhabit a completely different environment to its pre-evolution, where instead of living up in the trees like it used to, it swims between the land masses and tropical island chains. Well, that's four more Pokemon to add to the Pokedex. I quite enjoyed doing these last few design-focused videos instead of doing more story-based ones like of, like most of Pokepaint, but I think for the next episode I'm going to start tackling the gyms for this region. Well, at least a few of them. This is my updated team, feel free to leave yours in the comments below, as I'd really love to see them. And as always, if you like this video and want to see more like it, then subscribe and turn on the bell to get notified when I upload next.